So, hello everybody, welcome to a new episode of Mix with Daniel, that's me. This time I show you how you can make great drum sound with just two mono mics that were standing in front of a kit. Let me show you the result. And once more with the processing. So if you want to know what I did with these two mics, stay tuned and look this free tutorial. <laughs> So the first thing you've got to do if you want to have a drum sound with just two mono mic, no mic in front of the bass drum, no mic on the snare, just two mics in front of the kit. You obviously won't have uh, enough bass energy to really get a good drum sound. So you do need to have some tools uh, with which you really could manufacture some bass energy. And this is usually something that works way better analog. I would not really know any plug-in equalizer where you could do that. Uh, however, with a nice analog board and some nice outboard, I'll show you later, it's actually possible. So uh, yeah, let's quickly see. with uh, about 10 dB boost at around 5k. Uh, with the KDAG EQ still sounds nice. I don't need that many highs. Also the clients did not need that many highs. That's why we didn't do this, but if we would have to, we could. So what if we want to have more bass? Well, let's just add another EQ that gives some bass. In this case, I will add the Fairman Tube Master EQ. It's a really nice unit. So now it's bypassed. And then. And now we have quite a lot of bass, a lot of snap. What I did, I again boosted 60 dB, just, I mean, the, the behavior of that EQ is just very diff uh, different than the behavior of the KDEX. So actually, if you add both, that can give you a lot of energy. And as well as op I opened a little bit at 5K just to give some additional snap. Uh, let me play it again with both EQs and then I'll set both EQs to bypass and both EQs back in. should maybe uh, mention there is also a little 1176 on the drum and now we could also add the fair child or the unfair child by undertone audio to give it even more snap and more rock and roll feeling let's do this
yeah, that sounds nice to my ears. Now, again, I'll uh, let it play the way it's now with KDAC EQ, with uh, what, with the Fairman EQ and with the on Fairchild, and I switch everything in and out so you can hear the difference. And uh, finally, I think this is a, a good example of why analog technology in the uh, music technology still is really important. Because uh, finally, we have great plugins. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of plugins. I use plugins all the time. And it's great what we can do with the plugins. And it's great uh, what we get for the price that we are paying. However, it's... Uh, doesn't matter if the plugins are trying to emulate something or if they are trying to do something in an algorithmic way, but it's a difference moreover if you are working on the energy of the music. It's a difference whether you work with a real current, like in a desk, and you really shape that, because uh, with real current you are very close to the energy. Actually, the more current is flowing in the, in the parts, the more energy there is. And if you make some bands louder, you actually really work on the energy of those frequencies. While if you have the uh, things digitized in a computer, there is information, yes, but there is no, no such thing like energy. So it's actually extremely difficult for a computer program to alter the sound uh, in a way that what you get after your change really has more energy in some frequency ranges that, that that's actually not really or it's, it's it's happening well a little bit but not really and uh, you could try to do something like this this drum recording was done in a little room you, you could probably hear it it's really nothing special the microphones used for these two mono microphones were basically a u77 you could also take a U87 uh, and a U47 FET microphone. And we could also have done this with one microphone, but I added a little bit of room on the second microphone and I liked that thing. And that's why I uh, used those two microphones to create this drum sound. Um, yeah, I think that was it for now. I might show you in the next video what I did in the digital domain to this drum. We filtered out some room resonances that I thought were rather important to not have on this recording. And as I said already, I used a chamber on one of the mics and then uh, it sounded uh, yeah, really good. Um, I'll show you this next time. So thanks for looking. If you are interested in getting a paid 10 hour tutorial then subscribe on my webpage danieldetweiler.com it will be a paid tutorial uh, but not expensive i hope to have it finished in about two months also look my other tutorials and uh, ring the bell thank you bye